Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. We're back at it with the Just No Mill Crazy Grandma Saga, and today is the finale. If you missed parts one and two to this saga, I will link them now as well as in the description below. These last two stories are absolute doozies. So hide your carrot cake birthday cakes and let's jump into it. Grandma and the Births, the switcheroo. So, to recap, this story is about my maternal grandmother. She seems to be some sort of evil, wrapped in a human skin suit, and I actively hate her. She's the one who gives beyond shitty Christmas presents, including a Christmas-themed mankini to my brother and a rock to me, stole my birthday cake, that seems to be the story that threw people over the edge, and threw my parents a surprise wedding. So much worse than it sounds. I've been no contact with her for a few months now, but due to all the drama going on in our family right now, I don't think she's actually noticed. She has six grandchildren and pulled, or tried to pull, something at every single birth. This is the story of the birth of her first grandchild, my older cousin. Grandma does not give a sh what anyone else thinks about her. Calling her out in public doesn't work. She either just laughs it off or twists and manipulates things to make you look like you're overreacting, lying, or insane. It's just another opportunity for her to attack. She hasn't always been like this though. Back when her oldest and only son, my uncle, but DH for this post, got married, she apparently gave a shit about what her new Dills family thought of her. Both my grandma Grandma's family and her new daughter-in-law's family were, and still are, very well known and respected in their area. Think of it like if you lived in a small village and the local high school's head teacher's daughter was marrying the local minister's son. That kind of well known. DH and his first wife, Dill, were high school sweethearts, so both families had known each other for a while. And other than wearing a funeral outfit, including a black veil, to their wedding, she'd managed to successfully hide her crazy from them. Up until the birth of their first child, Dill had decided that she only wanted her husband and her mother in the room when she gave birth. This was way before mobile phones, so the plan was that when the time came, Dill would call her own mother and tell her they were on the way to the hospital, and her mother would inform everyone else while waiting by the phone. When it was getting close to the actual birth, DH would call Dill Dill's mom from the hospital to tell her to come over. Grandma was not happy about this. Oh, she was all understanding and gracious about it to Dill's parents and made mild complaints about the decision to DH and Dill, but she ranted and bitched to my mother about it for basically the entire pregnancy. My mom, naively, said that grandma could be in the room when she had her first baby. Me. Grandma scoffed and told her it wouldn't be the same and that she didn't care about her first baby. So, birthday comes. Dill and DH call Dill's mom and then head to the hospital. Dill's mom calls grandma and her husband, my grandfather, and my parents, and everyone gathers at Dill's parents' house to wait for the news. After a few hours, the women are preparing dinner while the men are well into their cups. The father-in-law is celebrating the birth of their first grandchild, and my dad is a Scottish-born Australian, so he's just helping when the phone rings. Grandma offers to answer it as Dill's mom is busy with whatever. Everyone else is in the room so they can hear grandma's side of the conversation, which is basically, yes, she's busy at the moment. That's okay. I'll tell her before she hangs up. She tells them it was a mutual friend of hers and Dill's mom calling to cancel some outing. A few minutes later, she excuses herself saying she's going to nip home for a few minutes and check her own answering machine. I think we can all guess what actually happened. Yeah, it was my uncle on the phone calling to tell Dill's mom to come to the hospital because it was almost time for Dill to push. Instead of passing the message on, she lied and left to go to the hospital herself. When she got there, she told the nurse's station that she was Dill's mom and was let into the room. Everyone was far too distracted to ask her why she was there and where was Dill's mom, so she got what she wanted, a front row seat to the birth of her first grandchild. 
Grandma proves once again that she is not human. I don't know why I'm surprised. I'm not really, yet I am. I don't know anymore. I'm just pissed. Anyway, background for those new to me and the special brand of bat crap crazy that I bring to this sub. This is about my maternal grandmother. She's actually a demon in a human skin suit that she nicked from some poor bastard. I was no contact with her, not that she noticed, but I've had to break it. I can't remember right now what I've posted about. I had my wisdom teeth out a few days ago, so I'm sore and just exhausted on top of all of this. But the big story that got people here pissed was that about two years ago, she stole my birthday cake. That's the story that just punted everyone over the edge. You didn't with cake in this sub. So last week, I was visiting my parents when the landline rang. The landline never rings. Nobody uses it anymore. The only people who call it other than PPI claim companies is grandma. My mom answers and all I can hear her say is, have you phoned an ambulance? And I kicked straight into emergency mode. As we race over to my grandparents' place, mom tells me that my grandma thinks my grandfather is having a heart attack. We pull up moments after the ambulance, help them in, and find my grandfather in the kitchen by himself. Grandma is nowhere. Paramedics get him sorted and my mom travels with him in the ambulance while I call everyone that needs to know. Fucking find grandma and follow in the car. Eventually I find her and we head off to the hospital. Guess where she was? Visiting one of her friends down the road. She'd been on the phone to this friend and heard my grandfather shout for her. So she hung up on her friend, called an ambulance, called my mother, and then went down to this friend friend's house to apologize for hanging up on her. She left her husband of over 60 years scared and alone, having a heart attack and possibly dying in his kitchen to visit a friend that she sees every day and would have completely understood being hung up on. And it fucking gets worse. We get to the hospital and I dump her at the entrance before finding somewhere to ditch the car. She's not there when I get back to the entrance, so I assumed she'd gone on ahead to find my mom and, you know, her potentially dying husband, she'd wandered off to the maternity unit. I missed exactly what she was up to, but hospital security had to bring her to the waiting area twice. Because my grandfather has Alzheimer's and my mother has POA, she was allowed in the assessment ward with him. While he was being treated and waiting for a doctor, my dad was in London at the time and the other family members I had contacted that were close enough to come help me wrangle the f nugget, my uncle, his wife, two cousins, and their partners all said they were busy, but could I keep them updated? So I was left trying to balance waiting outside the unit for updates and calling everyone to update them, which I had to run outside to do because there's no R swiping signal in this flap of a hospital and try to find the actual devil before she either sucks the soul out of a newborn or acquires someone else's skin suit. A few hours later, he's moved to the cardiology ward and we find out he had a very mild heart attack. He's fine, but they want to keep him for observations. So come back tomorrow. So I get my mom sorted. She's got some pretty bad sciatica going on right now. Can't drive, hobbles everywhere, and she was nearly in tears tears once the adrenaline wore off. Cut, punt grandma back into the car and head home. In the car, grandma calls my uncle and it's all, oh, it was so scary. And I just want to stay in the hospital with him. Go f yourself, you mangled bin goblin. I'm rage speeding. Mom's trying to reassure grandma and she's squeezing out what could be considered tears, but I don't think Satan's spunk counts. Anyway, we get her home and I'm voluntold I'll be picking her up the next morning for early visiting hours. I tell mom exactly what grandma had been up to for the last few hours, including where she was when we got there and why. We ended up in a bit of an argument as she tried to defend her. Lots of, she doesn't deal with emergencies the same way you do. And she was panicking. I 
pretty bollocks to that, but whatever. Anyway, we see my grandfather the next day. He's fine. Grandma is weeping over him and playing it up to all the nurses. I think I made my throat bleed with all the scoffing I did. They want to keep him a bit longer as he's picked up a UTI. He's on antibugs and they don't think he's in any danger, but he needs to rest. So he's staying in the hospital, but they're moving him from cardiology to basically a medical ward. Nothing scary. Bear that in mind. The next day, I get my wisdom teeth out under GA in the same hospital, so I don't have to deal with her for a bit. The day after that, when I'm back in the land of the less loopy, mom fills me in on what happened while I was under. The original plan had been for grandma to drive me and mom to the hospital so that she and mom could visit my grandfather while I was away with the fairies, and then she'd take us home, as my mom can't really drive right now with her sciatica. And I was still going to be somewhat f***ed. She decided to go shopping with the girls instead and decided to tell us about this three minutes before we had to leave. Because of course. So I drove my mother and I in and we essentially decided to see what happens. If her sciatic is okay enough for her to drive, then okay. If not, then we'd basically go through the phone book slash Uber. So I go off to get my wisdom removed and mom goes to see her dad. She's barely there five minutes when two of her cousins come racing in. Now, some background here. Grandma is the youngest girl of about a billion. I don't know, she has a lot of sisters. I think it's 10 or something. Every single one of her siblings, except the youngest, who lied about his age and off into the Navy at 14, smartest of the lot, are exactly like her. Some are worse, some are more mild, but they're all just no. I could write screens about what these women have done to their own families and just the world in general, but it's probably against the rules and I don't have the time infinity stone. Grandma's eldest sister is the one she was closest to and is the absolute worst of the bunch. No doubt about it. She was physically abusive to towards both her husband and children, and there's a possibility, slightly more than a little bit of a chance, that she murdered her husband. She's dead now though, and her son is a really amazing guy. He knows exactly what his mother was like, and has finally pegged my grandma too. I think I mentioned it a while ago, but he's the one that would visit my grandma and grandfather, and extend invitation to things to us through her. Big things too. Trips to Abu Dhabi, he lives out there. Wimbledon tickets, the Formula One, etc. And grandma would always turn them down without telling us, while telling him that we were busy or whatever. Anyway, a few years back, he ran into my dad at a conference in France and he just straight up asked, do you have a problem with me? And it just all came out. So now he emails my parents when he's back in the UK and my parents have been to Abu Dhabi with him. He's toured all over the US and actually made a special trip over to the UK when he heard I was heading to the US for a few weeks so that I could ask him everything. The last few years have been really great getting to know some of the extended family because let's face it, none of my family talks to the rest of it. These these women have very successfully kept all of their children separate from one another and now they're dying off and the kids, most of which are in their 50s now, are starting to reach out and discover, oh, OP's parents didn't exclude me from their wedding. Grandma stomped all over that shit like Godzilla on crack. Anyway, so this cousin and another cousin come racing in and ask a billion questions and are really surprised to see my grandfather sitting and having his dinner, conscious and everything. It's two to a bed in the ward, nurses are hovering, and they've got luggage with them. Mom gets them calm, they talk to my grandfather for a bit, then head to the cafe to figure out what the actual f Turns out, grandma called them and told them my grandfather was on his deathbed. According to her, he was in a coma and they were discussing turning off the machines. So if they wanted to say their goodbyes, they needed to get here soon. They'd both dropped everything and busted a gut to get here thinking he was about to die. One flew in from Abu Dhabi and the other from India and they'd somehow ended up at the same baggage claim and went straight to the hospital together. They actually ended up 
driving me and my mother back, which I vaguely remember, but I thought I was dreaming. They're both still here, staying at my parents' place. Cousin one is raging and called my grandma to scream at her. I missed that. Stupid bloody fairies. And she doesn't remember telling him that, to which my mother has finally stepped up and told her she's made her another appointment at the memory clinic because this lack of memory is really worrying and needs to be sorted. Grandma huffed. She does this thing where she pouts and crosses her arms while saying, I'm going in a huff now. Like she thinks it's cute. Fucking on you go then, bint. I'm really, really hoping my mom and these two cousins bond a bit more over each having just no mothers and that my mom starts to get more of a backbone in dealing with my grandma. Honestly, thank God for the comic relief of all the Scottish slang in these stories because I don't think my poor heart could take it without it. Yes, I agree, OP. I too really hope your mom wakes the F up and grows a spine. Grandma is so delusional and definitely has a main character complex. It's honestly like she believes she's living in a drama where there's no repercussions. And this sort of delusion is better Best not to be touched with a freaking 10 foot pole. Like I said before, I really hope OP's mom seeks some therapy and goes no contact with this woman. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at this, this is the last grandma story and OP hasn't posted in four years. I wish there were an update stating that they all went no contact with crazy grandma and they all lived happily ever after. So I'm I'm just going to pretend that they did just that and that the wrinkly old walnut is alone as to not torture or nearly kill anyone else other than herself. Ah yes, peace and balance restored. We can only hope. But anyway, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this crazy grandma just no mail saga. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!